All right, guys, so next we're going to look at the procedural noise textures. Now, if I come in here and go octane textures and become the procedural, we'll see this massive list of all the different types of procedural noises inside of octane. Now, there's a lot of them. I'm not going to go individually down each one of them. Plus, I already have a massive database of what each one of these looks like in our Blender octane community. So if I quickly jump over and show you that, for members who are in the community, if we look here, you'll see inside of here, we can search anything here up on the top. So I literally just search, uh, search for one of these here, sine wave, and there it is, right? Or I can even come in here and for example, go, let's just go noise texture, okay? And then it gives me a noise texture, and here it is, all the noise textures that are in that noise texture node. We got Perlin, Voronoi, Turbulence, Chips, Circular. So again, if I click on this, and here is the chips, and we can see the pattern, and then on top of that, we can also see the node setup. So there it is. There is the node setup. So it's a quick and easy way to just search really fast if you're not familiar with the different types. So if we come back here again, shift A, and then if I come into textures, procedural, all the way, noise texture node, there it is. This is pretty much the most, the most used out of all these nodes is this noise texture node. You've seen me use it in previous other videos. And if I come back in here, go to Perlin, and there it is. I go back to chips, and there it is again. Okay. So... This is pretty much the workhorse node. There are pretty, there's other ones too from Cinema 4D that if some people who are coming from Cinema 4D, they might be more comfortable with the C4D noises. But Blender Octane in the manual, they do recommend using the native ones that come with Octane because some of these you don't react the same way they do and as the way they did in cinema 4d but they are here if somebody really needed a certain type of noise and you can come in here and even just like you can see things do act kind of funny here you have to have the xyz you know uh projection on here especially when we're dealing with procedural noises this is the recommended node to use and then like you can come in here and play with this and basically do what you were kind of like doing inside c4d and then again, here's the native ones for Octane. And then I've got my gamma. I can control my gamma. I control my contrast, which I love here. It's, it's basically almost like putting the color ramp on it, right? I can control that. Again, drop on the projection here. We can drop in a UV transform to scale this up. Okay. Then Omegas gets more detail in there. If we can zoom in here, we get more detail, less detail. You know, there's our octaves. Again, if we come back to the details and crank up the octaves, it kind of, there it is, right? And then this also controls the overall power here. So that is just basically a little bit of a quick crash course into that. Again, if you're not familiar with these noise patterns and what they look like, I would always suggest just coming over into here. And if you didn't search this, if you come over to your Blender Octane into the, the front page feed here, and if you might not see it, it'll be right here, you click more, no database. And this is where I've lined them all up. Here is this, the recent ones I've added from Cinema 4D. And you can literally get a quick picture of what these nodes patterns are doing. We jump back over here, like all the way down to number four, some of the earlier ones here that I've done. Again, here is the gradient generator. So if you need to generate a gradient, well, this is generating some types of gradients for you. So you can look here gradient generator in the radio this might be something you might be looking for so this just really helps out and it i come in here all the time just for certain looks like oh how did i do those polka dot those circles well here it is this is the node that i would use to get those little polka dot circles here and a quick picture of the setup that i might need to use to replicate this look so that is just a quick kind of skim over the procedural textures in later videos, as time goes on, I will start to break down some more t texture, procedural texture stuff, and we'll get in here because there's a couple of special nodes also inside of here that are very handy, like one like the wood grain for simulating. It's a great way to start to get in simulating wood. Like if you want to make your own custom wood, this is a great way to get you in the ballpark and, you know, starting to set up a wood type of material. Okay, so we'll get into those later. All right, guys, next we're going to talk about the texture dirt node or also is kind of like an ambient occlusion map. So to find this, we'll come in here. We search uh, octane textures. We go into geomatic, geometric, and it should be right about here. 
dirt texture node again i just search everything so i did have to search that before this <laughs> but anyways so to take this the best way to do it, we could just plug it straight into the values here and if i crank this up to 10 you can kind of see what it's doing here it's basically doing a little bit of like some ambient occlusion here in the edges but i'm gonna show you a better way to set this up so we can see the results a little bit better and this is typically how i use it so let's say for example i have a i'm just going to take another material and we'll go ahead and bring in a metallic material, right? So we got a metallic material, we got a universal material. What I'm gonna do here is add in a mix material node, drop that into there. So again, we're mixing two materials here. I'm gonna change the color up on this just to get something different so we can see what's going on. So here is our material, we got the metallic and we've got this orange, right? This yellow color here. So if I take this, plug this up here on the top, and bring this up here and I'm gonna plug this into here we can kind of see what's happening a little bit more better. You can see here down on the bottom, the metallic is cutting through. Again, I have the cranked up to 10. Right now, if we set it back down to one, and matter of fact, uh, for the sake of this video, I don't like that. We're gonna change the setup, sorry. Okay, we're back. So I changed it basically to a blue so we can see again, so we can see what we're doing a little bit more better. Uh, we have our strength here. And again, like I said, this is basically like an ambient occlusion type thing. We have our strength, which controls the strength. If I crank that up to 10, now we can really see what we're doing here details controls the details again how much of the details that you want to bring in like you can see now we're adding in this edge and we're also bringing in a little bit more of the geometry so basically i think it's like how close the geometry is on this one basically the small curvatures you're bringing in the more small curvatures like it says here's our radius we can control the radius of that backing that off to zero and then adding more and this can be really cranked up here i think the max value might be 10. no it goes even farther it goes and it keeps going so yeah <laughs> there that is right so we have our radius here's our radius map and just like we saw in the curvature earlier we can add in a noise here add in a noise texture plug that into the radius map there crank that and now we can see we can add in some type of noise into this here which really breaks things up a little bit then we also have our tolerance this can sh this shows like how much between or how close two surfaces need to be before the dirt starts to work so if we crank this up again now we're pulling away some of those additional lines that we had in there like there was way too many lines if we go back here look all of those lines we don't want all those lines maybe we just want the edges here so then we can kind of isolate it to the edge more or less and but again this is not really good for edging we saw the curvature te texture works better for edging but look inside here this is really getting nice in inside the in in the crevices here and things like that so that's where this really shines again on the crevices the spread we can control how much of that spread we want and then again distribution so and then we have these other ones here i've never really used these options but we do have these bias options and I guess we can shift those around if you really need those. So definitely something to look into. Let me reset this whole node. One other thing for any of you guys who are new to Octane and Blender, if you click on a node and you literally just press backspace, it shifts the whole thing back to its default settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank that back up to 10. Now, again, down here on the bottom, we can also take this and we can change its coordinates. We have normal, world, object coordinates, normals coordinates. And then including object mode, like we saw in the curvature, we can include it for self, which it is kind of right now. And then if we had multiples, you can control it for others. So you kind of see they did break them off here. If I was to duplicate that, it's the same situation there. So we can set that all. Then we can invert this. So we're gonna get the inverse of that, which would be everything on the outside, which can also be very use, useful for just, uh, you know, breaking up some patterns or, you know, adding some type of grime to things. If we can lower that a little bit, play with the tolerance. You know, look, look at that. So it just really opens up your imagination of what you can really start to do here. So it's a very powerful node and just a quick and easy showing you how to do the dirt texture. I would also say this in combination with the curvature is really, really essential for adding grime and, you know, griming things up because the curvature will work well on the on the edges and everything else. The dirt node can come there and handle everything on the outside. So taking a look at the dirt node. If you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. 
Peace.